sister your mic is muted sister okay. no, just to sister. thank you i was here i was on the group since uh, 15 20 minutes and you have made such beautiful prayers and it's really touched my heart and thank you i can share something on the sacred heart which is so close to my heart and i'm sure with yours also so Very as we good. just join our hands uh, do you know that song sweet heart of jesus yes so can we all just unmute our mics and just sing it as a prayer so yes. that we we'll ask his heart to really beat in our hearts today as we just share about his sacred heart sure sister okay yeah sweet heart of jesus to the most sacred heart of jesus all glory and praise to the sacred heart of jesus present in each and every one of your souls and in mine because jesus is holy spirit is in each one of our hearts and we want to praise and honor him we bow down to the presence of jesus in each one's soul and we give him all the glory and praise for his beating of this heart for love for you and me May his heart fill our hearts with his presence now and always through the maculate heart of Mary and the sacred heart of Jesus. We make this prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. Uh, for how many minutes would you like me to share, sister? Sister, till nine you can go. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, perfect. No, actually, it's so beautiful. You know, we as Catholics, we love the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and we always keep a special place. I'm sure in our homes where we keep the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, where we keep a light burning 24 hours a day. I'm sure we all do that, right? And it's so important because that's the place that's our altar where where you know the presence of jesus we as lay people cannot keep the eucharist in our homes but the sacred heart of jesus with a uh, maculate heart of mary with our scripture that is a very holy place in our homes where we burn candles where we kneel down and pray where we come together as our family that place is our altar and that place is our tabernacle where the presence of god is there in his sacred heart this is a very old tradition it's coming down for many many years it was it was first of all we all know of saint margaret mary alacoque i'm sure we all know about her in the 17th century she you know before she got these apparitions she got very sick and for four years she was like a paralyzed person until she began to develop this deep relationship with the sacred heart of jesus and the sacred heart of jesus began to appear to her she had many apparitions and the sacred heart of jesus as you and i know you know told her to inculcate this faith in all christians and catholics to always honor the picture of the sacred heart of jesus and to pray on the first fridays of the sacred heart to the sacred heart of jesus with prayer and fasting and you know when we make nine first fridays jesus has promised us that before we die we will receive the sacrament and so so there were 12 promises that uh, they were to to uh, magic mary hello
I'm so sorry. I just put on that do not disturb. I'm getting calls. Just give me one minute, please. I just put on that do not disturb. Okay, praise the Lord. I just put that on so if any calls come, it will not disturb. So, you know, for you and me, the sacred heart of Jesus is such a special and prominent place in our homes, in our hearts, in our churches. Today is the feast of the sacred heart of Jesus and a very happy and holy feast to you and your families. And as we come in, you know, the sacred scripture on in uh, the Gospel of John, Chapter 19, verses 34. This is the scripture for the sacred heart of Jesus. It says, they will look at the one they have pierced. They will look at the one they have pierced. And truly, today, the sacred heart of Jesus is that resemblance. His heart, which was pierced. And when his heart, which was pierced, blood and water gushed out for you and me. And there's a, you know, the culmination of this all, the culmination of this all is the divine mercy, the sacred heart of Jesus, the divine merciful heart of Jesus and the Eucharistic heart of Jesus is all of the same. We celebrate the feast as the sacred heart of Jesus, but what is the sacred heart of Jesus? Remember, when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his death, he tells Thomas and the disciples, come, touch my wound. See, I was wounded. See, I was pierced. See my wounds. Feel my wounds. He says so beautifully, he wants them to believe in him. He wants them to love him. He says, come and touch me. Come close to me. Come, I want to feel you. I want you to feel me. That is why he appears to them and says, touch me. Today, the sacred heart of Jesus tells you and me the same thing. Touch me. Touch me. Come close to me. Come close to me. Feel my heart beating with love for you. And Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, you know, sums it all up. You know, it's so beautiful. I know maybe it'll be a disturbance to put on your mobiles, uh, your, your audio. But if you can just see it wherever you are. You know, this is the thing, you know, when we are in sin, the sacred heart of Jesus draws us. When we are happy, the sacred heart of Jesus draws us. When we have troubles all around, the sacred heart of Jesus draws us. Isaiah 53, 4 and 4 says, you know, 4 and 5 says, you know, wherever, wherever you are, if you want to unmute, fine. If not, just say it. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. Crushed for my iniquities. Crushed for my iniquities. Upon him. Upon, upon him. him. Is the punishment. Is the, is punishment. the punishment. That makes me whole. That makes that me whole. Makes me. And by his bruises. And by his bruises. We are healed. We are healed. This is his sacred heart. His heart where he took. It from the Father in John 3, 16, which says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus, before going in the ascension, he says, I will be with you until the end of time. His heart beating in the Eucharist for you and me. He left his throne in heaven. He left his comfort in heaven to come to a piece of bread which can be used, abused, and misused. But yet he kept his promise that though he has given us his word, his Bible, the word of God, which keeps us close to him, his presence with us, his love story to us, that we can touch him and love him each time we read the word and lift it up and kiss the whole, be kissing the face of Jesus, the sacred heart of Jesus. But at the same time, he wanted to, he so passionately in love with you and me that he wants to be inside us he wants to be embracing us he wants us to be inside him that's why in john 15 5 he says remain in me abide in me as i abide in you he wants to be that heart wants to be inside our heart that is why as we all know he has given us the eucharist the sacred heart of jesus which pulsates 
it pulsates with love for you and me each time he wants us to receive him become daily communicants this is what he told um, saint margaret um, margaret uh, mary alcock he says let them receive me in his, my body and blood because i am passionately in love with them i want to unite with them i want to become one with them i want my blood to mingle in their blood i want my flesh to go inside so each time we receive jesus in the holy eucharist in his heart comes in you know with all these eucharistic miracles whenever scientists have taken that piece of bread and sent it for examination it always shows that this eucharistic the eucharist is a part of the heart of jesus i'm sure you would agree with me in many miracles of the eucharist that eucharist is always shown as a part of the living heart of jesus living among us today in his eucharist in the picture that we place in our home where we cannot keep the eucharist but we keep that tabernacle of that heart of jesus in our homes the sacred place for blessing and anointing and she uh, jesus tells then margaret mary alcock that wherever my picture is honored you know i will bless that home so it means that his presence wants to be felt not only in us in the church in the eucharist in the sacred picture but he loves us so much that he gave his body and blood to us and even when we read the scripture we believe that every word in the scripture has the anointing of the blood body and blood of christ every word has life every word has his spirit and when we read it that word becomes flesh in us and if we continue to read it it becomes like a missile it becomes like a weapon it becomes it becomes like you know a a, a sword which in hebrews 12 before it says the sword double edged sword it cuts through everything removing anything that is not of the lord and bringing the life of jesus in us his sacred heart in us so you know this this, this is the spiritual meaning you know one of the most revered <coughs> catholic traditions is the sacred heart of jesus from of old now we have the divine mercy we have many uh, uh, many prayers to the blood of jesus the wounds of jesus which all actually entails the sacred heart of jesus because the blood cannot be separated from his heart his wounds cannot be separated from his heart the cross cannot be separated from the heart his blood cannot be separated from the heart it's all in jesus heart the sacred heart of jesus the eucharistic heart of jesus the divine mercy heart of jesus and one cannot separate the heart of jesus from the immaculate heart of mary no one can separate that it is just united that's why the catholic church believes in the three hearts the sacred heart of jesus the immaculate heart of jesus and the most chaste and holy heart of saint joseph you know we have three hearts many a times in the in devotions they pray to the three hearts okay because they all united especially mama mary and jesus the heart because the first time the heart of jesus started to beat was in the womb of mother mary it was through her food and her nourishment that the baby in her womb began to move began his heart was beating and when the heart beats the body becomes full of life and his little hands are moving his fingers are moving his body is moving he is a little child in the mother's womb and her heartbeat is keeping the sacred heart of jesus's heartbeat alive in her womb so we cannot we cannot we cannot separate the heart of jesus with the immaculate heart of mary because as our faith says mary also was sinless she was immaculate from the very beginning the father chose her to be the mother of his son can you believe it and the father god entrusted his very own self his son to the immaculate heart of mary that's why today when we consecrate our families to the sacred heart of jesus you know we consecrate means we give him everything we surrender everything and to the immaculate heart of mary 
you know, she will take care of us. She'll put a blue mantle around us. Keep us safe for Jesus. Keep our family safe for Jesus. Every time we say Mary, she calls out to her son, Jesus. I don't know why I'm talking about the sacred heart of Jesus. Her heart also comes to me to show me that, you know, the heart of Jesus first beat, his heart first beat in the womb of his mother. So today, you know, we have to see, you know, Christ our Lord, his great love, his passionate love for humankind through the sacrifice on the cross, which saved you and me. That's why we see the picture of the sacred heart. Sometimes you see a knife, then you see the crown of thorns around it. You see the blood oozing out from it, you know, and then you see sometimes Jesus' heart in his hand. There's so many symbols of his sacred heart. Everything meaning a deep, passionate love for you and me. Because even in Isaiah, it says, no, that even if our sins are red as scarlet, nothing is redder and redder than his precious blood from his sacred heart that can forgive any sin. He is the God of all flesh and he loves everyone. He died for you and me and for everyone, for the greatest sinners, for the lesbians, for the gays, for the prostitutes, for everyone. No sin is so deep and red that it cannot be forgiven by the sacred heart of Jesus, by the power of his precious blood, by the power of his holy wounds. That is why Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 comes up so powerfully. Give it for giving us our sins. Can you imagine? He took our sins upon his heart, upon the cross. And he made us free from sin. And we praise and thank God for that big, big gift that he has given us at reconciliation, our charism, our, going, our confession, our going to Eucharist, receiving in the Eucharist. Even when we die, before we die, he comes to us in the sacrament of healing. In our sacrament of marriage, he keeps us in his sacred heart, completely his forever, so that we live a covenantal life. And Jesus is so true to his word. That is why he came. He came to give us life and life in all its abundance. When we talk about life, we talk about the heart. We talk about the blood. When somebody wants blood, they don't see if it's a Hindu or Muslim. They gave blood so that the person can start living. So Jesus gave his blood for all mankind. So all of us can start living. Whenever we are down or we are in sin or we are doing something wrong, we cry out to him. When we cry out to him, he will hear our cry and he will come to us and he will make us free. So this is the feast of the sacred heart of Jesus. And we are all called to make God's love visible. We are all called to make God's love visible. We can't only say, Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. No, <clears throat> we have to make his love real. You know, Jesus is more real than you and me. He is real. His life, his physical body is there in the Eucharist birthday with beating with love for us. He is real. He is real. He is with us. He is in us. He's, he wants to move in us. That's why in St. Paul says, I live and move and have my being in you, Lord Jesus. His heart beats in us to become like him. St. Faustina's beautiful prayer says, you know, may my eyes be merciful so that I may never suspect or judge from appearance. But look for what is beautiful in my neighbor. How can my eyes become beautiful when I receive Jesus in the word of God? Like Mama Mary said, Amen. The moment she said, Amen, when the angel Gabriel came with the word, that word, which is the Bible word from the Father, the moment she said, Amen, that word became flesh and became Jesus in her, his little heart beating in her. Every time we go to Holy Communion, we prepare ourselves. We ask God to forgive us. And then when we go before him to receive him, what happens? The moment we say, Amen, we agree at the consecration and we're receiving him now like Mother Mary in our heart. And we take him on our tongue. He comes into our heart. His blood goes with our blood mingles. His flesh goes in. It's like the word of God when we read and say, Amen, that word takes flesh in us. 
and his heart starts beating with our hearts and we become like Jesus to others. That is why our eyes then become pure. Our eyes become pure. We don't suspect, we don't judge, but we look for what is beautiful in our neighbor. And we also ask Jesus, when we receive you, let our ears be merciful so that we can listen to our neighbor's needs and not be indifferent to their pains and moanings. Listen with the sacred heart of Jesus' ears. <clears throat> then we have to ask Jesus, when we receive you, Lord, in our hearts, let our tongue, our tongue. We know when you tell someone to start talking, you can understand what that person is. The tongue should speak blessings, not curses. The tongue should speak loving words, because from the abundant of the heart, our heart is very sinful. It's full. It's inclined to do evil. But we have to look after our heart, which is the wellspring of life. It is from our hearts that rivers of living water flows out to others. But how can that be if we do not honor the sacred heart of Jesus in our prayers, in our lives? And if we don't honor the sacred heart of Jesus in the Eucharist, how can we become like Jesus and have merciful ears, merciful eyes, merciful nose, merciful tongue, to speak beautiful things, to lift up people from their problems, not to bring them down, not to be sarcastic, not to send remarks. If we have done all these things, let us for a moment close our eyes and put our hands on our hearts together and say, Jesus, I am sorry, Jesus, for the many times when I received you as a habit in the Eucharist, you are the sacred heart of Jesus coming to me, Lord. But yet, I forget and I go into my own selfish ways. Today onwards, onwards, whenever I receive Holy Communion, let me know that your heart is beating and you're telling me like Thomas, come and touch me, come close to me. I want to touch you. I want to come into your heart. And so Jesus, let that be an encounter of greatest love so that I may no longer live Jesus, but it'll be you, Jesus, living in me through my eyes, through my ears, through my mouth, to this very heart, <clears throat> that it becomes a wellspring of life, that it becomes you, Jesus. I want to enthrone you. I want to enthrone your sacred heart in my heart today. And Lord, I ask for your merciful tongue, merciful eyes, merciful ears. I ask that my hands become merciful. My hands reach out to help the poor, that my hands reach out to kiss the sad person to love the sad person. When I go to the homes, like if we go to the homes to see the aged people where their families have uh, abandoned them, you know, in the homes. You know, we used to go as legionaries to the homes visiting people. And we used to see so many of the old people rejected, so many old people abandoned in homes where the old and aged, we used to go there cut their nails, comb their hair, sing to them. And they would keep on talking about their children, you know, and keep on feeling that loss that they miss their children. And yet they're all alone. Our hands and our feet should go there, touching them, loving them, giving them the sacred heart of Jesus, giving them the sacred heart of Jesus' love. Even in my prison ministry, when we go there, there's so many prisoners, you know, they're lost. Some of them are regretting, some of them are not, or whatever it is. You know, Mother Teresa will always say, in the prison, the prisoners are caught, but we commit so many sins and we are not. You know, we have to relay, realize that we are so fortunate that God has protected us from violence and crime. God has protected us, given us a family, given us a home, but most of all, he's given us his sacred heart, the Eucharist, the sacramental life, the gift of the rosary, the sacred heart of Jesus at the homes, in our homes, enthroned, enthroned in our homes. So as we go on, we ask Jesus, Lord, that my heart be a merciful heart so that I myself may feel all the sufferings of my neighbors. Jesus, you felt all my sufferings on that cross. Let me also feel from your heart the sufferings of those around me, especially starting from my family, especially that un, the one that I don't like, especially the one who come against me, my enemies, that I may pray for my enemies. You know, in the Beatitudes, it says, 
Blessed are the pure of heart, for they will see God. We have to pray that we may see Jesus in everyone. As I told you all the last time, that Mother Teresa would go out looking for Jesus in the sick, in the needy, in the slums, in the gutters. She said, I'm going to look for Jesus. Why? Because she was so close to the heart of Jesus. Today, we'll ask the heart of Jesus so that we may see Jesus in everyone. We may recognize Jesus and the beauty of Jesus in everyone. And when my heart is beautiful, we can pray. I'm sure we all want to be more and more like Jesus, no? There's that old hymn, I don't know if you know it. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity be thou spirit divine all my nature refine till the beauty of jesus be seen in me yes the heart of jesus the eyes of jesus the ears of jesus the mouth, the smile of Jesus, the words of Jesus, our hands and our feet of Jesus. When we do this, we see that Jesus can love the world through you and me. It is not I doing it. It is Jesus in me. I must diminish, but Jesus must increase. I must diminish and Jesus must increase. That why do we do certain reparation prayers, you know? When we are sitting before the Eucharist, that is the heart of Jesus. We are there with many reparation prayers, you know, asking God to forgive those who sacrilege, who come against Jesus, who abuse Jesus in the Eucharist, who abuse Jesus in the Sacred Heart, who abuse the Immaculate Heart of Mary. There are prayers we Catholic people have been given to go before the Lord in reparation for the sins of all the sacrileges and blasphemies made against him in his heart beating in the Eucharist for you and me. It is so important that we do that to appease the heart of Jesus, that by the blood of Jesus, by his wounds. You know, when we sin, we inflict wounds on, in our spirit. So when we surrender our spirits to the Lord, we ask his blood to cover those wounds. We need to forgive people. We need to forgive the ones who've hurt us. We need to love, forgive and forgive. We need to forget like Jesus forgets our sins. Jesus says, forgive as you have been forgiven in the Our Father. Unless and until we do not forgive from our hearts, our sins are also not going to be forgiven. We cannot live in that dilemma, that deception, that we can pray and pray and pray and think we are going to be saved. No, Jesus wants us to be his hands and feet and mouth. We have to become Jesus here on this earth. And his heart in the Eucharist, the more we receive, the more we have to become we hear the word of God, but how much of the word of God have we become? Because Jesus wants us to live his word, not only to read and to see and to hear and to give, because we'll be accountable for what we do with his word, what we do with the Eucharist in our life. Have we become a Eucharistic people, a people that we reach out to others, a people, you know, some time ago, I came across this analogy, you know, it says, in the naked night, I saw 10,000 people, maybe more, people talking without speaking, hearing without listening, writing with songs and stories, and their voices are never heard. Wanting love, but feeling crushed. No one to reach out their hand and speak a word of love. No one dared to disturb the silence of misery. The sound of silence was deafening to the ears of the one that's reading and listening. So today we have to have opened the eyes of our hearts. The sacred heart of Jesus wants us to become his heart. Open the heart, the eyes of my heart, oh Lord. My arms, Jesus carried the, in some pictures we see Jesus carrying his heart in his hand. He wants our hands to be his heart. He wants us to give food to the poor. Do spiritual works of mercy, divine mercy, acts of mercy. 
teaching, admonishing, befriending, you know, befriending, you know. It's so important if we keep the eyes of our heart open, we will recognize Jesus in the suffering people around us. Charles and myself, we recently we saw a rickshaw man and we become his great friend and we've been befriending him because Jesus gave us that inspiration to reach out to him. Many of people, I'm sure you also do that. And it just got, when every morning we wake up and say, Lord, help me to be a blessing. Help me to be your sacred heart today. And you know, you surprisingly, not surprisingly, so powerfully, Jesus reveals those people who needs that heart of love from you. He reveals the person who needs something from you. He makes you that blessing if you ask him to. He is a God who hears. He's not deaf. He's not dumb. He's alive. Alive in the Eucharist. He's alive in our heart. Alive in the world. Everything will pass, but he will remain with us forever. And so this is, <clears throat> this is what uh, analogy I read. It wasn't just beautiful. You know, voices never heard. You know, we don't we ignore people. We reject people. We make them, you know, people are rejected in the world today. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be accepted. But so much of jealousy, enviousness, selfishness, which what happens prevents this from happening. Today we ask Jesus, give me your heart, Lord. Give me your heart. So beautiful. Just like I pray every time before going for communion. I always say, Mama Mary, I'm not worthy to receive your son the way you received him when the angel Gabriel gave him to you in his word, in the word. So you know what I say every time I go to receive the sacred heart of Jesus pulsating in that Eucharist? I say, Mama Mary, this is Mother Teresa's prayer which she taught us as lay missionaries of charity. She said, Mary, Mother of Jesus, lend me your heart. So beautiful, so pure so immaculate, so full of humility that I may receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Love him as you loved him and serve him in the distressing disguise of the poorest of the poor. And you know, Mother Teresa would always say, you know, be the heart of Jesus wherever you go. When people were there in, the, in her home, you know, we live very close. We are neighbors are almost to Mother Teresa. And you know, her, her, her chapel, with the Eucharist always exposed, nuns going in and coming out with perpetual adoration. You can hear the trains, the trams, and the buses, and the people, the lane downstairs is full of those people who take drugs. They're fighting and abusing. So one day, mother, mother was asked by the people, you know, who visited her, Mother, how can you do adoration here? So much a racket and sound and noise. Then she tells them, you know, Jesus' heart is beating for all these people. If I do not train my ears and my heart and my eyes to recognize him now in the chaos of this world here in my chapel, how can I go out in the street and find him? How can I go out in the street and see his heart beating and suffering in the people, in the hearts of the people around me? In the slums, in the, you know, Calcutta has many, uh, much of Calcutta has improved because of the sisters of Mother Teresa and she, she set the tone and many people are helping the poor. But there are still areas and pockets where still the heart of Jesus wants to go. And we have to take the heart of Jesus into those areas. We have to look for Jesus. We can't be comfortable in our homes and just pray. Yes, there are times for intercession and prayer. But there's times where we have to take that prayer out and make it into action. Because in, the, in James... In, in the book of James, it says, love without action is nothing. Faith without action is nothing. You know, we have to have faith even to please God in our prayer. Leave alone, turning that faith into action. James says it in his book, you know, St. James, that we have to put our faith into action, our love into action. Because the word of God tells us in, the gospel, in, in John, that you know, wherever God is, there is love. God is love. It is love that made us. It is love that saved us. And we have to become love. God's love is so infinite, so big, so mighty, so high. We cannot reach it. So low. Yes, faith with love, uh, without action is nothing. Exactly. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. And so, as I mentioned the last time, you know, our fortress is our heart. 
we enthrone Jesus in our heart, wherever we go, we take him. We become living tabernacles. We are moving tabernacles because the God of the God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, he comes to dwell in our hearts. So we become his carrier. We become his tabernacle and we move. He moves. If we sleep, he's in our hearts. The spirit of God is always working in us. And that's why in Ephesians 4.30, it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God because we are marked for eternity by him. Do not grieve. Do not sin. Because his, what, is, what is his Holy Spirit? It is his sacred heart. What is his Holy Spirit? It is his blood. What is his Holy Spirit? It is his wounds. Because they're living in us. And his hearts are beating together with this. And his spirit makes everything live. No? If a person dies, he's dead. But this, the spirit goes for his judgment for wherever after we die, it goes. But as long as the spirit was in the body, the blood was moving, the veins were working, the heart was beating, the hands were moving, everything in our body was mobile, right? So the sacred heart of Jesus has to be the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Because, the, because yes, because the, sacred, because the Holy Spirit is the sap, is the, is, the, is the fusion of love between the Father and the Son. And that love is the sacred heart of Jesus the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. And that lives in us, mingles with us in the Eucharist. We keep him in our home. We have the enthronement on, in the month of June. You know, it's so important to do all these acts because it makes us closer to Jesus. Just come touch my wounds. Come feel my, feel me. Come closer to me. He told St. Thomas that and the disciples, touch me, feel me. Means come, come closer to me. And what can be the greatest word of scripture from Ephesians? Uh, um, Ephesians, um, what is that, you know? Nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Neither principalities, no powers, no anything, no death, no height, nothing. No one and nothing can stop our God from loving us. No one and nothing can stop our God from loving us. Even as Satan goes before the Father and condemns us day and night, we have our priest, our sacred heart of Jesus, before the Father, pleading our cause to forgive us. So the sacred heart of Jesus is alive in heaven for us. He represents us in heaven. He is the high priest of Melchizedek. On that altar of sacrifice where his heart becomes like that bread and wine which was first put on the cross and nailed along with all our sins, our transgressions, our punishment, which we duly need. He took it away. How much our love of the sacred heart. It comes down on, in the Eucharist to nourish us, to strengthen us, to become like Jesus, to be with Jesus. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. This is what exactly he's doing in the Eucharist, being with us the best way he can. And, you know, remember this uh, Helen Keeler. Helen Keeler was a blind, deaf, dumb, everything, right? She made a phrase once. She said, you know, the, maybe I cannot see, I cannot hear, I cannot speak, whatever. But everything I feel with my heart. Everything I feel with my heart. And she became such a famous person in this earth. So if, even if we don't have anything, you know, God's love for us can sustain us if we only love him back, if we only recognize his love in the Eucharist and the sacred scriptures and listen and pray, you know? If this lady who was deaf, dumb, blind could experience that in her heart, everything in her heart, we too. See, when I'm talking, I'm keeping on putting my hand here. And you know why we all do it? When we talk about the heart, automatically our hands go here. Okay, this is our heart. This is where Jesus dwells. This is where we enthrone him. And so uh, the symbol of the entire human person is in the heart. You know, when we meet people, we can sum them up by the heart, actually. You know, don't judge. But you know, it happens that when the person speaks and behaves, we can see from the heart what kind of person that is. Our hearts, you know, but our hearts are very sinful. That's why every day we have to give our hearts to the sacred heart. It decides, decides all evil. The word of God says from the heart springs all evil also, fornication, sin. Our, our hearts are diseased with sin. So we need the Eucharist. We need the sacred heart. We need his precious blood. We need his wounds to cleanse us 
so that our hearts may brighten, brighten with the heart and the love of Jesus. So we need that God looks at our heart. You know, that's the most beautiful thing. In the book of Samuel, it says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And so in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The flesh is the word of God. The flesh is the body and blood of Christ. The flesh is everything. Yes, that was Romans 8, 38, 39 is that earlier one. Which God's love is so, you know, nothing can separate us from the love. And Ezekiel 36, 26, you know, God is revealing to me now that, you know, he'll take away our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. It means, you know, the Eucharist. I don't know. It's just come to my mind. I never ever thought of it like this. Uh, you know, you take away a heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Since I'm correlating the sacred heart with the Eucharist, just now this reflection came to me. It could be that he means, you know, from the beginning of time, because mana was there, you know, the Eucharist, the prefiguration of the Eucharist. So this could also mean that he'll give us his flesh so that his body and blood can mingle with ours and we can change this heart of stone and become the heart of Jesus, his flesh beating with love for you and me. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take my yoke upon yourself and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in of heart and you will find rest for your souls. That's why we say in the sacred heart prayer, no? Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. And, and, the, little, and the rosary of the sacred heart, uh, Sacred heart of Jesus, be my love. Sacred heart of Jesus, be my love. And we ended with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pray for us. Pray for us that I can become, my heart can become the love of God. And we see in John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we have seen his glory, glory as that of the only soul from the Father, full of grace and truth. 1 John 4, 1 and 21 says uh, that, Okay, back to 8.17 says, he took our illnesses and bore our diseases on the cross and he gave us his heart of forgiveness. He took our transgressions, he blew, by his bruises we are healed. John 14.31 says, I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go forth from here. And John 14.1 says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. So that in my, in my father's house, I have many man, mansions and I go there to prepare a place for you and me. My dear, my dear precious people, let us examine our hearts today. Where are we? How sick is our heart? Because unless and until our hearts are not pure, we will not see God. Because without holiness, we cannot see God. We all falter, but we have the Eucharist. We have the confession. We have mass. We have prayers. We have the Bible. So beautifully, you all prayed Psalm 51. May that Psalm really cleanse us as we read it. May his blood come out through his word. Because, you know, the Bible has spirit and life in it. This is the cosine presence. The Bible is the cosine presence of God. His body and blood. There is blood on our Bible. Because this is Jesus. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word is God. This is the cuisine Eucharist. When we read the body and blood of Jesus is being in, going into our ears. The word that we are speaking, the body and blood of Jesus is being broken into our, and that heart, the flesh comes in. The flesh that comes in from the word of God. The word of God becomes flesh in us. And then we become another Jesus. Then his heart is sacred heart is beating with love for you and me. So John 15, 13, finally, we say, greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. And John 19, 34, we says, we are close with this. I don't know, I think, is it eight o'clock? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, my clock is not working. Okay. It says in John 19, as I began, you know, the sacred heart of Jesus verse of scripture. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear. And at once there came out blood and water, which gushed forth, which we pray at the divine mercy. Oh, blood and water, 
which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us and on the whole world, right? We pray, oh, blood and water. That is the sacred heart of Jesus, the heart that bled the red, red blood that cleanses even the reddest of sin. Nothing can be as, as beautiful as that. Isaiah 12, 3 says, with joy you will draw from the wells of salvation. That is the Eucharist. That is the bread of life, which is the word of God. And the wells of salvation, the wells of the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the heart of Jesus in you and me. And so Ezekiel 18, 31 says, cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed and make yourself a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? Why? When God is giving us a way, let us make, take the opportunity and appreciate it and do it. Let nothing stop us. And Hosea 11, 8 and 9 said, how can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adama? How can I treat you like Zebulun? My heart recoils within me. My compassion, my burning anger, I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am the God and not a man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in vain. Now, as the time is going on, I just read a few scriptures so we receive it in our hearts and the sacred heart of Jesus. Bless us. 1 John 3, 1 it says, Great love the Father has lavished on us and we are called the children of God. Today we are called the children of God because of the heart of Jesus that was pierced on the cross. We have been bought with the price and the price. What is the price that Jesus bought you and me with? The price of his precious blood. And it all comes from his heart, which is pierced, and that blood and water which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus. And so, you know, 1 John 4, 10, 12 says, he loved us because he loved us. And we say, you know, I love you, God, but he is the one who first loved us. And so, is it 8 o'clock? I don't know. I think it is, right? So we can close with this as um, uh, Psalms 116, 1. I am passionately in love with God. Because he listens to me. He hears my prayers and answers them. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23. The steadfast love never ceases. You know that song? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. morning. You you every every morning. morning. Great is thy faithful. faithful. Oh Lord, great, great is thy faithful. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All the best to all of us. Happy feast to all of us. And uh, though the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you and my covenant of mercy shall never leave you. So let us leave with this in our heart that though the mountains <laughs> though the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but the steadfast love of the Lord shall not depart from you and me. Right? And his covenant of peace will always be with us, no matter what we go through. His heart is beating with love for you and me. And so Psalm 86, 15 says, you are full of faithful love. And we take that faithful love and we give it to our husbands, to our families, to our children, to our neighbors. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. So we just put our hands on our heart for a moment as I close. And we just look into our hearts. And we ask the Father in Jesus' name. Give us our sacred heart of Jesus to come into our hearts. Jesus, heart of Jesus, we consecrate our lives to you, our families to you, our loved ones to you, our work, our health, our finances to you, every relationship we have with you and with others. O oh, heart of Jesus, burning with love for you and me, pulsating in the Eucharist and now, come into my heart, O oh, Jesus. Come into my heart and take complete control. I need you, precious Holy Spirit of God, to beat in my heart as the heart of Jesus beats so that I may become a new creation, that I may diminish and you may increase. Precious Spirit, come and take over. Take over. We surrender everything to the heart of Jesus today. 
and we enthrone him as our king, our savior, our fortress, our deliverer, our healer, our everything. And as we hold the heart of Jesus, if we have our Bibles with us, this is also the heart of Jesus, full of the love story. We lift the Bible up and we embrace the Bible. We love you, Jesus, oh heart of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You see, you feel a warmth from the love of Jesus coming out from the Bible. We lift the loving Bible, the heart of Jesus, his love stories for us. And we kiss it and we, we just hold it to us. This is Jesus. May Jesus change us and may he give us a new heart. Change my heart, O oh Lord. Make it ever new. Change my heart, O oh Lord. May I be like you. We make all our prayers to Jesus Christ, our Lord, with the mackie heart of Mary, with the courts of heaven. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my precious sisters and brothers, for bearing with me. But it's so beautiful. Happy feast to all of us once again. Thank you. Uh, sister, I have a question. May I ask? Yes, please, please. I uh, ask the Holy Spirit help to answer you. <laughs> Tell uh, me. So you said uh, 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 that uh, uh, we have to uh, keep uh, um, light on 